Hitler's grasp extended into every corner of the country. In this remote Norwegian valley, the Germans seized a very special prize, the Norsk Hydro Factory. Surrounded by mountains, the factory had been built on the face of a cliff overlooking a deep and impassable gorge. For the Nazis, it was an ideal location for a wartime project, difficult to bomb and easy to defend. But to the generals in Berlin, Norsk Hydro offered even more. In 1940, it was the only hydroelectric plant in the world producing large amounts of an extremely rare substance, deuterium oxide, also known as heavy water. As soon as they took control of the plant, production went into high gear. When word reached Great Britain, a powerful sense of foreboding swept through the Allies. As the most likely target for a German A-bomb, Britain faced the greatest peril. Is it possible they do not realize that we shall never cease to persevere against them? until they have been taught a lesson which they and the world will never forget. Winston Churchill's spirited defiance of the Nazis became a rallying point for resistance fighters from all over conquered Europe. Young Norwegians, eager for combat, joined the army of exiles gathering in Britain. There was no sacrifice that was too big to, to try to get the Germans out. Clean rifle. Well done. The British created a secret organization, the Special Operations Executive, to fan the fires of resistance. You volunteered and you were trained by the British to go back to Norway and work behind the lines on sabotage, instruction, reporting, radio information, wireless operating and that sort of thing. A few young resistance fighters would return to Norway undercover, armed with a plan to destroy the heavy water factory. They were country boys and city kids, engineers and outdoorsmen, university students and career soldiers. Shock troops in a clandestine war against Hitler's A-bomb. They would become legends in their homeland. And some of them would even star in this 1948 movie, chronicling their real-life exploits. Scenes from this film give a revealing glimpse of the daring mission. October 18th, 1942. Four of the men returned home in a dangerous night parachute jump. Their mission, to guide a British explosives team to the heavy water plant. When we were leaving for the dropping zone, you felt that some of the people sending you didn't expect to see you once more. So we had to more or less to cheer them up and say, it's not this, not this easy to get rid of us. We will be back. Just wait and see. Our target is the heavy water production. That was all. They said it's important and we have to destroy it. I knew that the heavy water was important for the German's weapon production, but in which way, I had no idea. The commando's first objective was to establish a secret landing field on the Hardangavir, a huge plateau north of the factory. Crossing that bleak expanse, the Norwegians took over an empty cabin and made radio contact with England. The operation could begin. For the first sortie, the British sent a force in gliders towed by bombers, a plan that needed clear weather. But over Norway, clouds, winds, and snow had cut visibility to near zero. For the Norwegians on the ground, 
The flight had become a disaster waiting to happen. I tried to get connection with England and warn them, but at that time it wasn't possible. And then suddenly I heard interference in my headphones and I knew they were not uh, far away. And shortly after we also heard the engines of the aircraft and it came dead on us, passed over us and disappeared. After about half an hour, the next plane with a guide, glider came and it came right to us correctly, turned and went away. The British troops never arrived at the rendezvous point. We got a message from uh, London that uh, both gliders in one of the Halifaxes had uh, crashed in the mountains. So that was the end of uh, the freshman operation. It was a complete disaster. The soldiers who survived the crash were rounded up and executed. The Allies' secret war against the heavy water factory was now exposed. To avoid detection, the commandos withdrew deeper into the Hardangavida. For weeks, perhaps months, they would have to live off a land where little existed but snow and ice. When this mission on the gliders failed, we had actually no supplies for a further stay in the mountains. So we were dependent upon reindeer. But at that moment, there were few or no reindeer at all in our area because of the wind directions. It was so very difficult to get to the reindeers. But the day before Christmas, uh, Jens, uh, he shot the reindeer. Jens learned that if you um, take the stomach of a reindeer, you get vitamins from the reindeer moss. So we cut up the um, stomach and took out the, uh, the uh, reindeer moss or the contents and mixed it with blood and everything and made a nice uh, porridge uh, mixed with brain. <laughs> and uh, we were eating it and it probably saved our lives. So Christmas Eve, we had a real fine party. Said that uh, we had a good time at uh, Christmas Eve. I remember well. You know your comrades outside and inside. Do you know what he is going to say before I open his mouth? I had endurance. I had a will to 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 hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to you, hold on. They would have to hold on through the darkest months of winter. But each day, the Nazi supply of heavy water was growing, drop by precious drop. London had to make a move. A second Norwegian squad, specially trained in explosives, would drop onto the Hardangevide and join their comrades in an assault on the heavy water plant. February 16th, 1943. 